So now that we've had a chance to walk through Reagan's library and get a feel for kind of who he was and, and what his life entailed, I think it's a good time to, you know, talk now about what Reagan's legacy really means for the Republican Party in 2016. There's a lot of talk again about Reagan and about using Reagan and Reagan's ideas and, you know, Reagan's even rhetoric to address the problems that we're dealing with today. But I think one of the problems with that general idea is that his ideology was so firmly rooted in the 1980s and in the challenges and in the context of that time. You have, for Reagan, you know, the embrace of individual liberty and the importance of individual choice, you know, and making sure the government was small, you know, in direct relation to the idea that we're fighting against this enemy that's all about centralizing control and being this giant government and getting involved in everyone's lives to the most minute detail. And then when you take that to, you know, Reagan's social conservatism, he was a social conservative and he was very much, you know, an evangelical. But at the same time, you know, that's also tied into the fact that, you know, the Soviet Union was inherently and actively secular and actively oppressing and trying to stamp about religion. And so if you were, you know, religious in the United States and you were claiming your, you know, allegiance to God and to Jesus, that was in a sense also, you know, a protest to, you know, the Soviet domination of the world. And so to go on from that too, you know, even with the economy, you know, the Soviet Union is all about centralized planning and telling people what choices they can make in the economy. And for Reagan, it was about pulling back those regulations and allowing people and in their inner, you know, creative potential to flourish, you know, in the markets. And I think, you know, that all makes a lot more sense in the 1980s and in that time period. And obviously not everyone agreed on his policies and you know obviously his legacy is not you know something that everyone agrees is great but what I do think is important as we talk about the Republicans and how Republicans are trying to sell themselves in 2016 you know, it's important to recognize how again rooted you know Reagan's ideology was in the time that he came from now if you think about it you know for people who are older it might not seem like that long ago but for people who are younger for Millennials you know most of us were not even born by the time Reagan left office so when we talk about us living in a different era today, a post 9-11 era or a millennial era, so to speak, you, know, you can start to see how the kind of tightly packed ideology that Reagan you know, proposed to address the problems of his time uh, becomes a little bit more blurred as we work to address the problems of our time today. And what I mean by that is, you know, let's say if you take the economy, for example, it's an economy that for years we've been reducing taxes and kind of cutting regulations. And so it's hard to say that we should do that more. You know, it, it might not have the same effect if you take, you know, ISIS our, as our primary national security threat rather than the Soviet Union, you know, building up conventional military strength to deter ISIS and get them to the negotiating table doesn't necessarily seem to be potentially the most accurate way or the most effective way of, of combating that threat. Um, and finally, you know, when you look at kind of basing a lot of politics off of evangelical values, it also becomes more complicated when our primary national security threat is inspired by radical, you know, religious beliefs rather than by radical secular beliefs of the Soviet Union. So when all of that kind of comes together, you can see that the higher conservative ideals that Reagan was really, you know, talking about still apply to today. You know, this, this excitement about individual choice, these very old ideas that came out of the Enlightenment that, you know, inspired the American Revolution that sit at the core of, you know, our, our nation to this day, those are all still relevant, but, you know, they need to be articulated in a more appropriate and applicable way to the challenges that we face today. And that's something that we as young millennials, potentially as younger candidates in the future, and as younger, you know, political activists need to be working to do, uh, rather than kind of waiting for a Republican candidate or waiting for, you know, a, a kind of stale conservative establishment to put that forward for us.